I've come to Belfast in the build-up to the marching season. I'm heading into town with Norman Riley, a Protestant taxi driver. Everywhere there are flags marking out unionist and nationalist territory and murals celebrating the paramilitaries. This is us now heading into the Shankill Road. And I say that the Shankill Road's a core of oil. Well, already, look, look, I can see every lamppost has got a flag that says Britain to me, yeah? They've always flown flags in the loyalist communities. That's a way of identifying the Taven neighborhood. I'm surprised to find people still marking out their territory so blatantly. But I'm even more surprised by what Norman shows me next. Now, you'll see here on my right, this is the peace line. So this is this, the wall. This wall here, yeah? And this wall separates Protestants from Catholics. There's actually, believe it or not, in and around 40 of these walls in Belfast. And Still? I mean, yep. There's more walls that have been built after the ceasefire than before. So, after the ceasefire, after yep. the Good Friday Agreement, Good Friday Agreement. There have been more, more walls. walls have been built after. Because of sectarianism, they're building walls to separate communities. Now, this is the biggest one there is, yeah. the and longest, to prevent them throwing stones over. Just yeah. stones? Well, stones, maybe petrol bombs. A 60-foot wall. What happens if it, if it was taken down tomorrow? Take it down tomorrow. There could be trouble here by that night or by the weekend. The wall stretches for half a mile. Norman agrees to take me to the Catholic side, accessed through a steel gate, open by day, and locked at night. Those gates aren't as high as the fence, though. No, no there's but nothing... there's, there's camera. There's a steel pole to the right, and there's a big camera that monitors the gates. Obviously, length of the police station. So now this is the Catholic neighborhood we're in. In 1969, this street was burned down by a loyalist mob and 1,500 Catholics lost their homes. It was one of the events that started the troubles. Why, why, why are there now more walls since the Good Friday Agreement? If you if actually, I always say to people, if you take the name of them, they're called peace walls. They're designed to keep the peace between the two communities. So the only time that the wall will come down is when the people feel safe enough in these areas that the wall can come down. And when they request that it gets taken down, that's what uh, And that down. presently, you know, that, that's not the situation. It's not happening. You know, you just don't feel safe. You don't feel safe. One thing that's needed in both communities is trust. A lot of trust needed. If I went into a pub on the Shankill Road or he went onto a pub on the Falls Road, he just wouldn't trust the people who sitting beside and I wouldn't trust the people who I was sitting beside. So you don't go for a beer when you knock off? No, definitely not. Wouldn't do it. Wouldn't even contemplate it. It's crazy. And we'll have to break down all those barriers. As he says, it's a trust issue. For many loyalists, it's a matter of principle that they should be allowed to march on what they call the Queen's Highway. Orange Order leaders have called on supporters to protest against the ban. <laughs> Police strategy is to collect video evidence so they can make arrests later. Right, they're warning them, right, to disperse now, otherwise they're going to unleash with a water cannon. There you go, there it is, there's the old man. It's the guys in the Shankill Boys Band. It's the guys in the Shankill Boys Band in the front. Get him up! Get him out of here! Get him out! Come on, get him back! Oh, 
Stop. Public order first theaters, please. Urgent. Well, this is a piece of masonry that hit one of the inspectors and broke his leg. They're unconscious. I'm starting to lose officers in the line. That's soon going to affect my ability to hold. Over. With injuries increasing, Graham orders his men to escalate the response and start firing baton rounds. Uh, this is one of the rounds that's been fired. Um, and we've been told this is no different from being hit by a baton, uh, like a baton like that. I slightly beg to differ. I would want one of those fired up at me very close. I've got to send that weapon there. Reinforcements are brought forward to give officers on the front line a rest. As evening falls, there's no sign of the crowd dispersing. Now it's getting dark. Locals are saying they're going to start throwing things a little bit more sophisticated than just uh, bottles and rocks. The number of fireworks that just landed over there is not. There's another one there. Come on, come this way. 32 policemen were injured across Belfast that night. The rioting went on for four days. Policing this year's parades and protests has cost £28 million. Pounds. Republicans have been fighting the British for a united Ireland ever since Northern Ireland was created in 1921. During the Troubles, the IRA killed 656 British soldiers and over 600 civilians, according to the University of Ulster. Under the Good Friday Agreement, their political wing Sinn Féin agreed to end the killing in return for a place in government. For most people, the agreement has brought peace to the city. But for some, it's not enough. My opinion is that if the causes for conflict remain, unless you remove that, you know, the reasons for the conflict, I think it's inevitable. I think it's a, a, both inevitable, inevitable and unfortunate that we will condemn future generations to, to that conflict, that Anglo-Irish conflict. So what you're saying is that even though there's been some peace for some time now, it could go back to the way it was, where the streets run with blood as they did here. As long as Britain violates Irish national sovereignty, there will be people in this country who will resist that by whatever means necessary. But I'm about to discover that many loyalists feel equally let down by the peace process. Earlier this year, loyalists mounted three months of protest when the council voted not to fly the Union flag permanently above City Hall. Many were angry at what they felt was giving in to Republicans and undermining their British identity. It's approaching the 12th of July, when Protestants march to celebrate the victory of William of Orange over Catholic King James at the Battle of the Boyne. Marching bands are wary of the media because they feel they've been demonized in the past. But the Shankill Protestant boys have agreed to let me film with them. <laughs> Gary Lenehan set up the band in 1980. What do you think of the situation now, 15 years after the Good Friday Agreement? When the Great Friday Agreement was signed, I mean, I voted yes, and I, I would say it's a given that 70% of the island voted yes. But that was uh, on the basis that you were guaranteed to recognise your culture. But that's been flipped in its head. It's an onslaught of a cultural war now, and, it, and it's relentless. It's a, it's, it's, it's a seven-day week. Every single bit of my Britishness, they're trying to erode. 
What about the Catholic community here? I mean, how do you think they feel about the bands? Because it is a bit of a show of strength, isn't it? No, no it's not a show of strength. It's, it's an expression of culture. You have 100 members of the band, and you take that tenfold out with their families, where they're all one big family. The band's your heart, the band's your life. All I want, as I said, and all we want as a band, is just to be left alone to express our culture. <laughs>